Good evening, everybody, and I want to welcome to welcome you to our Hartman Baldwin's latest in our webinar series. This one tonight, we're going to be focusing on design development, or maybe we could better way to put it, uh, successes in the details. So I want to welcome you all here tonight. I hope you've had a chance, if you're like me, to leave your office in the dining room and find a nice warm cozy spot in the house to sit down on this chill evening maybe grab your favorite beverage your favorite evening beverage sit down and just spend a little bit of time with us talking a little bit about this idea of building residential homes remodeling residential um, and how we do this and tonight we're going to focus on on design development before we go too much further, I wanna just give you a little bit of a background about who we are, Hartman Baldwin. Uh, we're a design build firm and we have been from uh, day one when 35 years ago, Bill Baldwin and Devin Hartman started the firm. Uh, we had this idea that if we can bring our, the designer and the builder together, that that is gonna be a much more, a better pathway for success for everybody involved, not just for you, but for the, the designer and the builder as well. So we're a, a full service firm, architecture, interior design and construction. We have a full-time architectural staff. We're also general contractors. So to put it in a nutshell, we're able to take a project from our initial meeting with a client all the way through to moving you back in your house. Um, I get that questions all the time. People say, so I can go on a cruise and come back and it'll be done. Theoretically, yes. Practically, that's not always the way we work. it works out, but we can take care of everything from step A all the way to step Z. A little bit about myself. As I mentioned, my name is Bill Judson. Uh, my title at the firm is Design Build Consultant. I'm a, a licensed architect. I, I got my bachelor's degree in engineering from UC Berkeley, and then my master's in architecture from uh, Cal Poly Pomona. I'm also uh, a uh, lead accredited professional. And um, I also like to, to point out, I, I, I grew up in a stained glass studio, Judson Studios uh, up right here in, in Highland Park in Los Angeles. And I bring that up simply because I reflect on it quite often. And the, I think what, what is most meaningful as I stand here today is when I was seeing all this stained glass growing up, the impact, the idea that we can have a piece of the architecture be something beautiful was very powerful. You know, here we have windows that have to keep out weather or keep in the heat or keep out the heat one way or the other and, and keep us uh, protected from the elements. But yet it can also be something of beauty. And to me, that's what really resonated when I started working with Hartman Baldwin 15 years ago was here was a firm that, that shared that value system, that the places that we live aren't just shelters, but they can be beautiful. They can be places that we come home to, or in this case, spend most of our days in, and they can be beautiful and welcoming and warm and places that we just wanna spend more time, okay? So that's one of our core values is let's bring the idea of art and architecture to, together in one spot. Joining me today also are a few of our a few of my colleagues, Jesse Emmert, Carla Rodriguez, Christina Ramos, and Danielle Doster. They helped put all this production together and everything for me. So I want to thank them for that. And then also they're joining us on the panel tonight. So if you should find yourself with a question, uh, you know, with this virtual webinar, we, 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 we can't answer those, see your hand or anything. So just hit that Q&A on my screen, it's up at the top, drop your question in there. Uh, one of us will, will answer it during the webinar, or if it's a more general question that we think would be good for the whole group to hear, uh, we'll have some time at the end to, to cover those. So, all right, with that done, here we go. I wanna spend a little bit of time just kind of putting this in context. Uh, for those of you that maybe have talked to us or, or have seen one of our previous webinars, you've seen our, our process outlined in, in pretty good detail. And basically it's broken up into three parts, okay? The first part, the design, we break up into two parts and you can see it up there, okay? Let me just, first off is the conceptual design. 
Then after the conceptual design, we're gonna get into design development, right? And then by the time, which is what we're gonna be focusing on tonight. And then when we're done with design development, then we're ready to move into construction, okay? So sounds very simple. It can be very simple. We try to keep it very simple, but those are our three basic parts of getting you to a successful build or remodel. So the, in the conceptual design, I'm gonna to touch on this very briefly. What we wanna do is figure out the big picture in a lot of ways. We, we wanna understand what the goals are of your project, what we've got to work with physically, your lot or your existing home. And then we also wanna understand what uh, the, the, the jurisdictional requirements are gonna be from the city or county, depending on what you, where you live. Then we're ready to start into some design solutions. And we can explore some design solutions, write a scope of work so we have an understanding of everything going into the project. We have a, also a full-time construction estimator. So very quickly, we're able to couple up our design solutions with costs and put you in a place where you have the information to decide how to move forward. If you're interested, and this is a, a I can't stress this enough, this is a very important part of the process. And if you haven't seen it already and you're interested, I'd encourage you to go to our, our YouTube channel and watch our Avoiding Remodeling Pitfalls. And in that webinar, we do the deep dive into the conceptual design, and a little bit deeper dive into the process. So it's a really great starting point, sort of a prequel, if you will, to this uh, webinar tonight. The next part, like I mentioned, is design development. This is where we want to figure out all of the details. Okay, this is where we'll get the engineering done. We'll get the interior design all figured out, all the architectural detailing, all of the selections, the flooring, the countertop, the sinks, the faucets, everything down to literally the kitchen sink. So the end of this piece of the process is a good set of working drawings, blueprints, if you will, that we can go and get permitted, okay that, that we're going to be able to get approved at the jurisdiction that we're going to be able to build to that we're going to be able to get some good reliable cost information for you and probably most important is it's going to convey to you what the project look like looks like right and that's what you really care about don't you what is this going to look like what's this going to feel like when we're done and a good set of working drawings uh, will do that for you. It'll satisfy all of those requirements and then also give you an indication of what the project's going to look like when we're done. Because if we have a good set of working drawings, if we've got a good set of, of plans, when we get into the final phase, construction, and my project managers give me a hard time when I say this, but at that point, it's all just execution, right? Because we've taken the time to figure out all the details, pick out all the materials, figure out all they're all coming together so that we know all of that. What we want to avoid here are the unknowns, okay? What, or, the, or just have the, the lack of detail because then we're opening ourselves up. If we have a lack of detail, if there are blanks in the drawings, someone is going to fill in that blank, right? And I think you want that to be you or at least have an understanding that there are no blanks not someone out on the job site who's pouring concrete, has to figure it out as they go, and so they throw something in there, not knowing if that's really the way you want it or not, simply because it's not on the drawings, okay? So tonight's focus is gonna be on that one part, okay? Design development. And one of the concepts I wanna bring up to you is this idea of there are, there's a different level of services when we, when we think about design development. For lack of a better term, I'm going to just call one set basic, right? There's basic service, basic design services. And at the other end of the spectrum, at the other end, we have what we call full service, right? Where we take care of all of that. So this is something that that I think you want to take a moment and, and try to understand because I get this question asked all the time. We, like I mentioned before, we'll, we're a full service firm. So I always get asked the question, well, Bill, you know, I got pricing on plans for my project and they're substantially less than what your costs are. 
Well, to be facetious for a moment, you're gonna get what you pay for, all right? I know it's tempting. I know it's tempting to take the cheaper alternative and take your chances. It's gonna be cheaper, it's gonna be faster, but is it gonna be the end result you want, okay? So, so hear me on this. When you hear things like basic design services, I hear other people call it a permit set or a builder set. What that means is you're gonna get a set of drawings that's gonna allow you to go and get a permit. Simple as that. It's just gonna meet those jurisdictional requirements. It's not gonna have the detail that's gonna describe to you what the project's gonna look like or describe the person even scarier, describe to the person that's building it what it's gonna look like, okay? It's gonna have a bunch of blanks. And somewhere along the line, someone's going to have to fill in those blanks, all right? Now, it's also going to be tough to get accurate construction costs. You know, for example, if in your kitchen, your, your drawings have a rectangle and an arrow pointing to it, and it says kitchen cabinets, and you're going and getting three bids on this, one person may be getting their cabinets from Ikea, one person may be thinking that they'll get them cheap from Indiana, and another person may think that you're going to do them all fully custom, okay? Now multiply that out by the hundreds of decisions that happen as you go into a construction project, that can just balloon or shrink in a very unrealistic manner. And then what can happen is you'll get into the project and start to find these things. Like if you didn't figure out how that soffit is going to meet your cabinetry, Someone is going to do that. And when someone's that someone is out there with two by fours and a hammer in their hand, what do you think their motivation is going to be to get this done? Right. And so you may come home and go, gee, that's not the way that I pictured it. And you get a response like, well, there wasn't anything on the drawing. So that's just the way that I planned on building it. You know, we can do it the way you want it, but then I'm going to have to take it out. I'm going to have to charge you more. Right, so now we start to see these cost overruns, these schedule delays, this loss of control of this dream that you've been trying to hold on to, probably been thinking about for years, and you end up with a couple that I think that that picture kind of describes it. They just feel like, oh my God, we are so deep into this and this thing is spiraling out of control. So we wanna keep control over the design and, and get an outcome that's predictable, we wanna make sure we're spending the right amount of time in design development. On the next slide, you'll see some things that, these are some things that, that people tell me, hey, you know, your cost is so much more. I don't need detailed drawings. You know, I'll be able to figure it out. You know, I have, I've, I've gone to, uh, looked at plans that people have asked us to bid and I'll say, boy, you know, we haven't, we haven't picked out countertops or sinks or faucets. In some cases, I've even received plans where they haven't even picked out their windows yet. And I'll bring this up to them and, oh, don't worry about it. You know, I'll make decisions quick. Okay, that's fine. But, you know, I also have heard stories of people saying that if they come home, they're doing a remodel, they come home at the end of the day and their contractor is sitting there waiting for them. And he says, hey, we're ready for your kitchen sink. We're going to put it in tomorrow. Whoa, okay. What does that mean? Maybe the kitchen sink you really want, we have to order from the plumbing supplier and it's got a two week lead time. Are you gonna stop the job for two weeks to go and get that sink? Or are you gonna go to Home Depot and pick up one that's off the shelf so you can just get this project done, okay? Those are the kinds of things. We can figure it out in construction, but it's opening us up to all sorts of cost overruns, the loss of schedule, and not getting what you want. That's probably the most important thing. Some people will tell me, oh, as long as I get what I want, I really don't care how much, it, how long it takes. But even without a good set of design development and not, may, it may not come together the way you want. So let's talk about the contrast of that. Let's talk about what it means to have a full service. And so what, you know, one of the ways to think about this is, you know, when we start designing, we start with a blank page or a blank computer screen nowadays. And we start generating design ideas. We start putting things in place. And there's a lot of blanks in the drawing. Each time we meet, we figure out more of these blanks, okay? 
when we get to construction, if there's a blank in the drawing, and I say we, I mean, you, you know, generally, if there's a blank in the drawing, we have to be concerned over who's going to fill in that blank and how they're going to do it. Okay, so that's what we want to do. Like I said at the beginning, success is in the details. That's what we want to figure out in design development. So for full service, we're going to get a scope of work. What does that mean? We want to tell everybody what's on the floor, what's on the base mold, what's on the walls, how many light fixtures, what kind of light fixtures. We want to make sure that our engineering is lining up with our architectural detailing, right? We don't want a beam going right where we're trying to have a vaulted ceiling, right? We also want to figure out all of the interior design. We don't want to be in that place where we have to make decisions under duress, where our kitchen has been torn out, or we're starting on the foundation of our house. And those decisions have to be made in a short amount of time so that we can keep moving, okay? Much rather make those decisions in the comfort of our own home or in our office as we're looking through all of that. Picking out all the materials and specifications. Now, one thing I wanna stress as, as if I haven't already, and I probably have, is that a big piece of this is making sure that you get what you want. I know, and I do this myself, we save up money, we save up the mental space, make that leap into, okay, I'm ready to do this, okay? But how do I make sure I get what I want? And one of the things that we can do that's part of design development is the renderings and 3D models, right? Because with today's technology, we can start to show you as we're going, hey, here's some ideas I have for the cabinetry and for the backsplash and all that kind of thing. And then we can start showing that in a rendering. So we can start picking out, you know, backsplash tile, not just backsplash tile, but what is that tile pattern? What's the countertop? How thick is it? What does it look like at the end? What's the detailing on the cabinetry? Do I like having open shelves? You say it's a custom hood, but what does that look like? So even in just this one corner of the kitchen, I just pointed out just a handful of decisions that need to be made. And there are tools like this that help. In fact, some of you probably know that, but the photo that you're looking at right here, this is actually a computer rendering, okay? So that's, that's the one thing that's great about with the day the, and age that we live in is we can almost to a T recreate what we're proposing in a 3D model, okay? Now, what does this do for us? Gives us a lot of detail on the plan. So now we've got some accountability to the design. If the soffit doesn't meet the crown mold the way it's shown in the drawing, then we can just show the drawing to the guy that put it in and go, hey, you bid these drawings. Here's that detail. This is the way it's supposed to be. You're accountable to the design. We can also get reliable cost information because we know what the tile is. We know what the backsplash is. We know how much of it we need. We know what kind of cabinetry. There are no unknowns really. And in fact, if you get a chance to see the, the, the prequel to this, we'll talk about how we can get to the point to where guarantee, we Hartman Baldwin, guarantee the cost of construction before we start construction because we've got all of that figured out. And then once we have all of that figured out, now we have control of the cost and the schedule. Now we can look and see, oh, that sink that you really like, great, no problem. That's a two week lead time. We'll get it on our schedule so we can get it ordered in time on the spot. On the spot. And then you can have peace of mind. You can go to bed at night knowing that this is coming together the way that you want it, that you're gonna end up with that thing, that dream, that beauty that you want. All because we took the time at the beginning to figure out the details, to plan the work before we start working the plan, right? So let's go, I wanna show you some, some examples of what I'm talking about. So we're gonna go a little, in a little bit more detail and, and show you what I mean by these design development drawings. And one thing that's important to keep in mind as you talk to people is in this idea of design development or blueprints is that everybody that needs to look at the drawings is getting a different piece of information from them, okay? So who needs, to, who needs the drawings, all right? 
First of all, our city or county officials do our jurisdictions because we need to submit to them to get our approvals and to get our permits. So what are they gonna look at? They're gonna look at, are you meeting the planning code? And are you meeting the building code? You know, the building code is gonna show us what we need to do structurally. You know, the fact that we need to, the city doesn't care what you have on your floor. They just care that you have a finished floor, that you have finished walls, that you have heating, that your electrical is up to the electrical code. The plumbing is up to the plumbing code. What your fixture is or what your sink is or what your cabinets even look like, doesn't matter to them at all. Just do you meet our code? We also need to have a set of drawings that we can build to, that someone that's gonna build this, your contractor, your general contractor, ourselves, has a set of drawings that there's enough information there that we know how to build this. I was looking at a set of plans the other day and it had uh, masonry walls, it had framed walls, it had firm furred walls, it had, to use architecture parlance, five different wall types. And as I was flipping through the drawings, I could see there were different walls on the plan and I got to the sheet that called out the wall types that showed them. And then I would flip back to the plan, but it didn't show where those wall types were on the plan. So how's a builder supposed to know for sure if this is a masonry wall, if this is a framed wall, if this is a furred wall, and who's gonna get, you know, who's gonna guess that? We also need to have enough information to get good cost estimating. In our case, we have a full-time uh, construction cost estimator. So when we come to him with this level of detail, it's great. You know, he knows how much uh, a Viking um, or a Sub-Zero fridge is, and how much is a Wolf Range, and and, uh, and how much that stone's going to be. How much foundation do we need? Framing, windows. How much the windows are, and so the guesswork from him is, is taken out. And that's how we can get to more cost control, right? More detail on your drawings is gonna give you more cost control in construction, which is what you want, right? We don't wanna feel like this thing is an open checkbook and it's just, I just have to keep writing checks until it's done. And I'm not gonna know how much this costs until it's completely done. And then probably most importantly, you need the drawings, right? You need to have an understanding of what your house is gonna look like when it's done, okay? So we have all of these tools, drawings, renderings, all of that good stuff, but we wanna make sure that we're filling in all of those details so when all is said and done, it comes together the way that you want and you can celebrate you know, getting that dream that you saved up for and spent all that time thinking about and now it all comes into fruition. So let me just kind of give you a little bit of compare and contrast so I can kind of show you what I'm talking about. And what I'm gonna do is just show you an example of some things from these basic plans and some from what, what I would consider uh, a fully developed plan. Um, as you know, you can even see just at first glance the difference. If I zoom in here a little bit to the basic plan, what you're looking at, if it's not, immediately uh, evident, and, and it wasn't to me at first, except for I saw the word kitchen, is this is a kitchen uh, on a set of drawings that I that uh, we were asked to bid. And um, boy, <laughs> if there aren't a lot of blanks here, I don't know what else to say. I mean, we can see about how big the kitchen is. I mean, you can see that we probably have an island here. I'm gonna have to guess just because I read drawings that these two rectangles here mean that there's a double sink, okay? I'm gonna guess that this little rectangle here is a dishwasher, but I don't know. I, have, I really can't say for sure, okay? You know, even down to the point if we start to think about islands are crucial, right? You can see, is, does this mean that this diagonal, does that, or dash line, does that mean that the overhang is on that side of the island? Or is that the part that there's cabinets under and the overhang is on this side? So we wanna make sure that we're looking at all of that. I don't know if you can see it on your screen, but right here in the middle of the kitchen is a note. That note says, see interior elevations for cabinet dimensions. And I got this set of plans. I'm like, oh, okay, great. I'll flip to the interior elevations. Then I'll be able to figure out what, what it is this project is. And so I go to the table of contents on the front sheet. 
lo and behold, zero interior elevations, okay? This is what happens, this is what you get with that permit set, right? Like I mentioned, the, the city or the county does not care what your cabinets look like. They just care that you have a kitchen that has a sink and a cooktop. That's all they care about. So they don't need interior elevations. So if you get a permit set, you're not gonna get them. And so I, I, I stress to people, if you care about what this kitchen looks like, you need to describe it, right? Because when I say kitchen, <laughs> What pops into my head, what pops into your head, what pops into your partner's head are three different things. And we can use the design development to all get on the same page. So if we show you a, a, a plan of what I would call a more fully developed plan, okay, now we've got some information here. Now at least I can see, um, you know, what our cooktop is, where is our fridge, right? I can get a little bit more detail on that island, okay? And then I'll point out something here that's probably a little bit difficult for you guys to see because the plan is just the beginning. In a, in a, in a permit set, the plan is the end all, the be all. In a fully developed set, the plan is just the beginning because we're gonna see, again, if you, hopefully you can see, we're gonna see little call outs right here. Like this one says A01 and A11, A04. And so we're gonna have a reference to what those are. A is appliance, and I'll I'm gonna show you that in a minute, but just keep that in your head for a second. And then I also wanna point out something that you see here, this little bug, this little circle and, and square. What that tells me is that every one of those points, I can, sh I can go to that page A8.1, and look at, if you look at that says B1 and the arrow pointing here. So then I can look at what does it look like if I'm looking at this wall right here, okay? And then what does it look like if I'm looking at this wall right here? And then what does it look like if I'm looking at this wall right here? Those are interior elevations, okay? So keep that in mind. The other thing I want you, so I've got two things I want you to keep in mind, those little, what I call schedule callouts and these interior elevation callouts, and then just make a note of these three little squares here, okay? So in plan, that indicates those are columns, okay, that are holding up a beam, okay? Now you can see, maybe you can, or maybe you can, I've scribbled over this drawing so much. You can see, given the location of these columns and the amount of time that we spend in our kitchens, how important is that what that looks like right there? Okay. If we leave that blank, we may end up with three or four four by fours holding up our beam. All right. So keep that in mind because I'm going to go more, uh, show you what I mean by that in a minute. So let's go a little further. Let's, go, let's start to look at, okay, interior elevations. Even if we have them, what sort of information are we getting off of those? And what sort of information are we missing in something like this, a basic elevation? So this is a, a, an elevation of your bathroom, okay? Oh, great, I can see I have a water closet, a toilet, a bathtub. My bathtub is a foot and three inches away from my toilet. I have a sink, but that's about it. You know, there really isn't much more information here. Again, oh, we'll figure it out as we go. I'll, I can make decisions quickly okay, we need your bathtub tomorrow. <laughs> Where is it? What does that cabinetry look like? So we wanna make sure we develop that fully. Let's look at something that shows a little bit more detail. So here's an interior elevation of a kitchen, all right? This in fact is the, is the kitchen that we showed earlier where we had the rendering. And here's the level of detail you wanna see, right? Here's what you care about. They had this beautiful oven in here but now we can start to see, you know, how, how tall is the cabinetry, right? We can see, okay, what, what is the, not just the tile backsplash, but what is the tile pattern? We wanna make sure that we don't end up with funny little tiles right where my eye is gonna lay. You can also see that this backsplash, hopefully you can see it, 
comes down and then is lower so that it tucks underneath the windowsill. We also see more technical things here like where are my plugs? How many plugs do I have? Is that enough? Are they at the right spot? Talk about you know the craftsman as well. The electrical goes in before the cabinets and if the electrician doesn't have an interior elevation, they may put the plug where it usually is 14 inches off of the ground. How handy is that gonna be for you to have a plug 14 inches off the ground when really what you want is having it above the, the, the counter. You also start to see all of this detailing in the cabinetry where we've got open shelving, floating shelves, all just, you know, how the window, how close the cabinetry gets to the window. What is the cabinetry look like, right? We've got an example, we'll show you what the doors, how many drawers do I have versus doors? You know, you may have some special things you want, like this little pullout drawer here, special for the, our, this particular client wanted the spatulas and labels right there. And then we've got another pullout right next to that that can be tray storage. Hey, I can go on and on about all of this and how important it is, but hopefully you can understand that to get what you want, we need to spend time to figure all this out. And it may be tempting, right? May be tempting at the beginning to save a little bit of money. But think about this. Generally speaking, in general, if you go to a full service architectural set, your design fees, your, your soft costs may be about 15% of your total cost of construction. Okay. Now, if I'm saving on the 15% instead of the other 85%, incrementally a little bit, I know it's tempting, I catch myself doing it all the time, but that little bit of that I'm saving puts me up into huge risk on something that's 85% of the cost. And even in that 15% of the cost, the design development is a fraction of the 15%, okay? So be careful about where you're trying to save. If you're trying to save on your design development drawings, tell us that. We'll be able to find areas that we can save at the 85%, whatever you think you're gonna save in design development. All right, I'll, I'll move on, all right? Hopefully I'm, I've, I've made my point there. And then even exterior elevations, right? We wanna understand what the house looks like from the outside. You can see on the left on the basic, frankly, is a bunch of rectangles, right? We don't really know, well, what material is that? You know, what, what kind of material is the chimney? Is that stucco? Is it siding? Is it, in fact, what kind of stucco is it? Is it soft, you know, hard trowel, flat stucco? Is it, you know, really textured stucco? If I'm a builder and I'm looking at this and I'm saying, oh, well, this person is probably gonna base this on the low bid and I can just put up a textured stucco for much less than I can a hard trowel stucco, you may end up with textured stucco when you wanted hard troweled stucco. So we wanna describe all that. We wanna look something more like, let's look at a fully developed elevation. We're okay, in this case we had, you know, shingles and concrete and window mullions. We wanna get a sense and we had stone and river rock and columns. So we took it even a step further, not just talking about what material is where, but how do these colors work together? You know, one of the things that people oftentimes look, and if you look at it in elevation, your house, when you're looking at your house, if you have a pitched roof, about half of your visual plane is the roof. So we wanna make sure that the, the roof color and texture works well with the wall color and texture. We wanna make sure that we're seeing neat little details in our windows that are important to us, you know? Where are those mullions and muntins? Figure all of that out. All right, let's keep going. Okay, remember when I talked about on the floor plan, how that's just the launching point and we're gonna see things, what, what architects call, we call these schedules. Basically, these are lists of materials. And a good developed plan is gonna have a plumbing schedule, an electrical schedule, a door schedule, window schedule, appliance schedule, tile schedule, anything that we have multiples of, 
that we want to specify will generally pull off into what's called a schedule, which is basically a table. So let's dig a little deeper. I'm going to start with showing you a basic one. Sometimes I have to bite my tongue a little bit. This particular project, uh, when I started looking at it, these, this was, uh, again, from a basic set. I go, OK, I'll start looking at the window schedule. And it has the things that the city wants, or in this case, the county, right? What kind of uh, glass is it going to be? What kind of material? That kind of thing. But nowhere in this schedule does it say what kind of windows it is, right? It does say, I can see it here, OK, that it is aluminum windows. OK, great. Now, let's suppose I'm, I'm going to bid this for them. Do I go and I find an aluminum window that's $150 each? Or do we put in a window that I know is going to operate well, hold up better over time, but it's $500 each? And you can see this is just a partial list, but this is a lot of windows. And, the, and this particular prospect hadn't even picked the windows because not to get too esoteric, but all that the county cares about is that you have these windows, that they're going to be watertight, and that you're going to meet the California Energy Code. That's it. Okay. So in a sheet of drawings, even in a basic set, you're going to have these, what we call Title 24 calculations that say the window must have this much emissivity, this much transmission, this much uh, insulation value, da, 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 da. I've run into situations where there was no window specified. And they said, well, just bid a window that satisfies the Title 24 calculations. And there was no such thing. You know, especially if you like modern architecture and you have big windows, a Title 24 person is going to show you, OK, here's what you need. But they're probably not going to take the time to find a window that satisfies all of those needs. That's going to be left to you. And I'm here to tell you that I've been in situations where what the Title 24 calculation came up to be, such a window did not exist. So then we have to start making compromises. Do we make windows smaller? Da, 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 da. The other thing I'm going to point out, remember, we're going to talk about or we're going to talk about details here in a second, right? So when we think about what you care about, what you care about in all likelihood is how the window is, is set into the wall, you know? And you may have this vision of I like the windows set, you know, I don't want them flush with the outside of my wall. I want them set into the wall. Okay, so an architect or a designer is going to do details for you to show that. Okay, if uh, you probably can't see it, but right here are, are call outs that are going to show me where those details are. First of all, this list went on, I think there was, uh, I don't know, 27 line items. Only three of them had detail call outs. Two of those, it was two different wall types. Remember, I talked about goes into two different walls. But all of those call outs for the details are the same. So basically, no one has thought of that. And you may go, oh, we've got it figured out. Here's the window I want to do. And you come home and see all of your windows flush to the outside. That's not what I wanted. I wanted them flush to the inside. And I want them set in from the outside. Well, that's not on the drawings. That was the easiest way for me to put them in. You want me to pull them all out again and put them in for you? It's going to be this much that at a schedule. So let's go to a, a more appropriate, a, a more detailed. And I know this is hard to see on your screen, but this particular uh, schedule, this is a, an appliance schedule, is from the drawing that I showed you the plan of the kitchen, if you remember that, okay? And if we were to blow this up, you would see the information that we need, right? In this first column, we have symbols. So remember I said some say A01, you know, I think we had A11 in there. So if we go A01, I come to this table, okay, that A01 is in the kitchen. Oh, it's an underwater, under counter wine cooler. Not only that, it's a Uline beverage center wine cooler, model number do 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 what kind of specification is specific to that? Where can we get it? Are there any special things that we need to be under consideration of all of that? And then in typical too, when you know appliances don't tend to have a long lead time, 
But on things that will have a lead, long lead time, plumbing fixtures, tiles, that kind of thing, we'll even have the lead time in there so that all of that is figured out and, and we know when we need to order all of that. So again, these schedules are not to be overlooked. They're not the most attractive looking things. You may wonder what it has to do with your design, but they're very, very important to get across the detail. The things that are hard to show on a drawing will show up in your, in your schedules. So then let's talk about details, architectural details. Remember when I said, hey, here's a detail called out for this window. Um, this particular, this is an interior elevation you're looking at. And uh, it may be clear, it may not, but you know this, this right here is open to the kitchen. This right here is open to the entry. So what you're looking at is a hallway where, okay, I go up the stairs here, I walk down the hallway into the kitchen here, walk down the hallway into the entry here. So giving you a good idea of what that's going to look like, because you can see there's a lot of detail here. I can see how tall is the wainscot? How is the paneling working out on the wainscot? Do I end up with any funny little panels? You know, how do those beams line up up above? Where is the drywall? Where is the wood? How big is the base mold? What's the crown mold look like? And then what I want to point out to you is right here is a little dashed line that says, I'm going to give you more information about this little column here, right where this wainscot comes over. And so let's turn to that. Let's look at that detail. So now we blow it up. Now we're saying to you, the, the owner, here's what we think this could look like, okay? So we have a structural post coming up through there. Remember on the plan, I said, remember these four little, little squares right here? Well, that's what is happening right here, okay? Now, how many of you, when I said those four little squares indicate posts or columns, I can't remember what I said, pictured what's here right now. I'm gonna gamble and say zero of you pictured that, right? So, but we wanna make sure that you understand, hey, here's the idea that we have. We're gonna have this wainscot going all around and then we're gonna expose some of the structure with these little columns. All right, I like that idea, but even more, what does that look like? So that's what you see to the left on that drawing in that, in that detail is how big is that little piece there? How does that meet the wainscot? You know, how much space do I see between that column and that wall? How is it all trimmed out? You know, down to the point even where, I don't know if you can see this, but right here we have the exact molding that's going right here and the exact molding that's going right here right from the catalog. So really wiping out all of those unknowns, giving whoever's gonna build this an idea of how to build it, what some accurate costs are around it, and then more importantly, giving you an idea of, hey, what is the idea? This is probably not the, the first column detail we presented, and, but it was the last. And so as we go through the design development, we may say, Hey, here's an idea of how we could do this column. We could do it round. We could do it all the way tall. We don't have to line it up with a wainscot. But eventually, going through design development, showing you these ideas, showing you these details, even bringing them up into your mind that these are things we need to think about is how we get to this point and how once all is said and done, it comes together just the way you want it. And you walk in and you're like, oh, you know, I love the way that column detail worked out right across from my kitchen. It's a beautiful thing and everything in my house is so well thought out that I can't go through here and find anything that I'm not happy with. That's what we're striving for. The other thing that, that often gets overlooked or I shouldn't say often gets overlooked, we can overlook, especially if, we, you know, if we're getting close to building is all of the interior design. Every client that I've worked on where, with a home that has a kitchen or a bathroom, at some point, they kind of look up and they say, I had no idea how many decisions I was going to have to make. You know, I think we think, oh, it's easy. I got a countertop. I got some cabinets. I got some tile. I got a sink and a faucet. Yeah, but it's a lot more than that. How is that all coming together? So we want to have someone that kind of knows what's out there. What are the possibilities? 
hey, you know, you may have, have gone to a stone yard and, oh, I love this stone. That's what I want on my countertop. But I don't know what floor goes with that. And I don't know what we should do with the backsplash or what color the cabinet should be. So we want to figure all of that out and get someone professional that's trained in this that their answer isn't, I can make quick decisions because do you really want to make a quick decision when you're doing the construction of your home? Probably not, right? These decisions, if they're well thought out, if they're well planned out, if they're all tied together, really, if you think about it, you go all this trouble of designing this home, the structure, the drywall, someone can come in and ruin it with the wrong interior designs choice, right? The wrong color, the wrong tile, the wrong detail can end you, you know, bring you to a place where every time you walk in your house, it's like, ugh, I hate the way that column looks. And it's the first thing I see every time I walk in the door. This is something that I, I, I can't emphasize enough. This is part, you know, some people really love this. This can be a really fun part if we have a process if we know what we need to decide and when and get some guidance on how all this comes together. And, and, and so I'd encourage you to dive a little bit deeper into this, go on to our YouTube channel and, and, and click on our Art of Interior Design. And we'll walk you through a project we worked on and how the interior design process worked on that and show you some finished pictures of that project. And then probably I'm gonna, we're, we're one of the final and, and I'll say probably one of the most important and probably the most often shortchanged is design supervision during construction, okay? You can easily hire a designer to get your plans, get your permit and say, hey, I've got it from here and go off. But I'm here to tell you because uh, I tried for years to come up with the perfect set of drawings and it just doesn't exist, right? As much as we try to figure it out, figure it out, there's going to be questions that come up during design. And, and I don't think you want to be stuck out there with someone going, hey, I'm, I'm building it to the plans or even worse, you know, I've had, I've had contractors joke with me and go, Bill, you know, you can spend all the time you want doing all these plans. Once I get the job, I'm going to build it the way that I want. Whoa. Okay. We don't want that. Right? We've spent all this money and time and frankly, emotion getting to this point of figuring all this out that we want to make sure it's coming together the way that we all envisioned it, the way that we showed all these 3D renderings, all of these detailed designs. We want to make sure it's coming together just that way. So we want to stay involved. And we talk about full service. The architects, when we're doing a project, our architect is meeting with you every day. We, you know, there's going to be things you may want to think about changing, hey, or maybe adding a little bit. Now that we're doing this, I'd really love to have a door that led into my garage. And if that door is there, I want to finish the garage, whatever it is. There's going to be key meetings, you know, we, we have one of our key meetings is a job walk where we'll get all of the potential subcontractors, all of the people from our company that are going to work it on your house, spend the morning together, looking at everything. I mean, I can't tell you the power of having the electrician and the framer and the HVAC guy standing there together and going, okay, we're going to put the air conditioner over there. So I need to get power over there. Oh, and by the way, I need to get the duct up here, but we're going to have this big beam running right through where I need to have the duct. So to have all of these people together at the same time working it out, not just giving us the lowest bid, but, but wanting to see a successful project, that job walk is intense. And then, you know, you, you, you don't know, in fact, some people don't know and tell the electrician or the HVAC guy is there some of the challenges that we may be facing, but we want to find those challenges out before we start construction. So that's, and then even during the construction, we'll have electrical plans, we'll have all that figured out, we'll have cabinetry, but we'll say, okay, let's get the electrician here and we'll go through room by room with the electrical plan. Okay, do you like the switch over here or would it be better if you had it over here? 
you may say, gosh, you know, the island's going to be here. I'd really like it if these lights were just a couple of feet forward so that I don't cast a shadow when I'm trying to prep my, my meals. Plumbing, cabinetry, all of those things will have a specific meeting just to make sure it's coming together just the way you want. And then you get all of that design continuity all the way through construction, right? You're not left with someone on the job site saying, hey, I'm just building it for the plans. And that's how things can actually get better during construction because even though we'll try to express as much as we can with the drawings, there's still, it's once we start to see it all to come together, if we have a good team, a designer, and a contractor and yourselves all together, working together, things can actually get better during construction. I'm here to say that. So let's look at some of the fun tools we can use in design development too. I think I've talked a lot about, don't worry, I, I put before up there, this is not, this is a before of one of our projects. But I, I've talked a lot about kind of the, the end result of the design development tonight, this set of drawings, okay? But there's a lot of work that we need to do to get there. A lot of iterations, a lot of ideas that we need to express to you as we're developing that design. Remember that column? We may have looked at eight different columns. This particular house, okay, um, not the best looking house in town when we started. And they really wanted to do something completely different, okay? So they came to us and we started proposing some ideas that were completely different. But sometimes it's, it's hard to just see that in drawing. So we need to take it a step further. Again, while we're just presenting the, these ideas. So we'll start to pop up some models where we'll start to call out things like, you know, what, what window material are we using? What, what walls are we using? What materials on the exterior? You know, this house, as you can see, is completely different. If you remember the, the previous photograph, this is about, that was that part of the house, right? And then it came all along like this, that was it. So just such a dramatic change, but how comfortable do you think you would be if we just said, oh, we're gonna do this and that, and it's gonna look like this versus being able to see something like this where it's called out. And then generally at this time too, our interior designer has looked at it and we may have a stucco sample and a roofing sample and a, and a metal window sample and then all of the other color palettes so we can see it in real life. In fact, we may even like we did on this case, need to take it a step further for you. What does this thing really look like if I'm on the street how does this thing mask? I can't quite tell how those roofs come together. So we can create these models on the computer to show you what that would look like, at least in, in, in massing and, and, and how that's all coming together. Very, very powerful tool. And I don't, even though I spent a lot of time on the drawings, I don't want to de-emphasize when it's called design development. Most of it is development. Most of it is talking with each other, communicating with other, each other, us coming to you with designs and ideas and finding ways to communicate with you that you understand what the, propose, what the proposal is and getting you in a place where, okay, let's go ahead with that. Then we'll get that into the drawings. Okay, boy, I've talked about almost an hour here and I know many of you are probably ready to get on with your evening. I'm gonna let you go. Uh, here in a second. Oh, and here's the, the finished project. Sorry, I showed you the before and I almost went right by the after. So, you know, definitely a very distinctive style. The client came to us and said they wanted something completely different and unique. And I think they got it, you know, in a very attractive, very unique, wonderful way. Okay, guys, let's, let's start to wrap it up here. I, like I mentioned, uh, I, I did want to leave a little bit of time here for some questions and answers. I don't know if some have been popping into the Q&A. I didn't look, but maybe, uh, Carla, did we get any good questions? Or any questions? I'll even take bad ones. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. That was great. Thanks for uh, 
uh, walking us through that process. It's so fun to even, for me, even just to sit here and, and watch it all again, it's really helpful. We did get a couple of really cool questions, some that we hear quite often, but uh, one that was, I think, really pertinent to this discussion is, what if they already have, what if a client is interested in working with us, but they already have an existing relationship with an interior designer? Yeah, that's, you know, that's, that's fine, you know. Um, <laughs> It's, it's pretty common actually, you know, and, and I've found that, um, you know, our approach is very much that team approach. So if you have someone that you're connected with, that you have a good relationship, you know, the interior designer is another person on the team, you know? And so we welcome that. And I find that, that interior designers are very appreciative of our process, appreciative of the drawings and detail that we can bring to them appreciative of a clear understanding of, of what they need to help us pick out. And then, you know, if that's a relationship that you have that certain comfort level, I would encourage you to bring along and bring into the project. So yeah, we've, we've done that on numerous occasions to great success in the past. Yeah, thank you. Another one that I think is quite common when we're talking about this, especially when we start getting into the interior design process is sometimes clients will come to us and they'll have a, a piece of material or a tile, something that they've kind of been, been holding on to for a while and they really like it. We just got a question in one of the, um, in the chat. What happens if some things are just discontinued? Yeah, the, well, <laughs> we may be out of luck. Um, or depending on what it is, we may be able to build it ourselves or get special orders or that kind of thing. Or that piece may be the inspiration. Okay. If we just find, oh my gosh, this, we can't get this. But, you know, funny story. I had a, a client one time come to us and, and we spent a lot of time at the beginning talking about, you know, what's your style? How do you want this to look? You know, what do you, you like something like this? You like something like that? And this particular client walked, we were doing a, a major remodel for them, walked into her kitchen, grabbed a spoon, brought it in, and she had a, a set of silverware designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. And she went on and on about how this spoon was not just beautiful and well-designed, but how it felt good in her hand and, and just how she loved it on, on and on and on. And that was kind of the springboard, not just seeing that thing that she thought was beautiful that could provide an inspiration for us to, to leap from, but just her, hearing her vocalize the things that were important about the aesthetic of this, the beauty, and not just that, that it needs to fit well in her hand and it needs to be the right size scoop and all <laughs> that kind of thing. So, Things like that, that maybe you've been holding on for years, there is something about that that's keeping you holding it on for years. So we want to find that nugget, that piece of inspiration that we can then blossom from and, yeah. and, and take off. Yeah, so true. Learn the story of what moves you so that we can mm -hmm. kind of help develop that for you. Interesting, yeah. Another question, uh, let's see here. It looks like Jesse's uh, answering some in the chat, but one that came up that kind of relates to the entire process as we begin is, you know, now with what we're experiencing with COVID and some mm. of the things that are going on there, I think one of the questions was, you know, how are we seeing the process kind of unfold considering what we're seeing now? Is it staying the same? Is it taking a little longer? Uh, especially when clients are considering uh, starting the, the yeah. process. Um, it, you know, it, it is taking, things are taking longer, you know, and, and, um, you know, if I back it up from, for a minute, you know, things are taking longer at the city, um, things are taking longer to get ordered. Um, so yeah, we do, we do need to exercise a little bit of patience in COVID, you know, people are working from home, people are getting sick, you know, so just to give you an example where, you know, we would see getting a city approvals in a four to six week period, that period's more like about eight to 12 weeks, you know, and then most people I talk to are aware that there is a remodeling boom going on right now. If you know anybody you know, like us that's involved with remodeling, there is a boom and everybody's very busy. So, um, 
you know, we want to make sure we're taking care of people and, and, and getting the work done the way that they want it. Um, but, it, but everybody is real busy. So be prepared for that. Things are taking slow fingers crossed. We'll get vaccines in our arms pretty soon and we'll start crawling out of this and then start uh, gaining speed back to, to getting your remodel project done. <laughs> Well, I think that's it from uh, from my end. I, that's, all, that's all the questions we received tonight. Thanks again, Bill. That was very great. Helpful. I want to just point out a couple things. I mentioned the YouTube channel. Um, you know, go on there. Of course, or connect through Facebook. All the uh, you know houses that we have a lot of good things on house, Instagram, all that good stuff. And then uh, I'm guessing that we have all of your emails too. So if you're interested in upcoming webinars, uh, you can see up there. Um, February 11th, we're going to rebroadcast the uh, Avoiding Remodeling Pitfalls. We've got another uh, construction showcase where we're going to go through and show a project, a completed project, the project that you see in front of you. Uh, talk about that. Talk about the process, how we got to there, some neat, neat things about that project. That's coming up on February 25th, so keep an eye out for that. And then if at any time, if you feel like you'd like to have myself or Jesse or Carla come out, talk to you a little bit about, you know, you, what you have in mind for your home, learn a little bit more about us, just give us a call or there's even a, 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 an ability to schedule that uh, consultation online. Um, we'd love to talk to you, tell you a little bit more about us and hear what you have in mind. And then if that seems like a good fit, we'd love to work with you and, and help your dream come true. But remember, we got to figure out all those details. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, everybody. Thank you very much. Hope you have a good evening. Thank you for being with us. Um, I hope it was helpful and I hope to uh, Zoom with you all uh, very soon. Thank you.